Stacey oh. was fuming. She I was fuming. fuming. <laughs> what have I done? What made you cross? <laughs> oh, what made me cross yeah. this? Oh, oh, well, actually, this week, I, love I was fuming. <laughs> yeah. What made me cross this, this week? week. <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> um, I went in to get a facial yesterday, and the beautician, therapist, um, dermatologist mm. uh, suggested to me that it was the right time in my life to start getting Botox and fillers. At what point? Is this like when you walked in the door? Well, we went, were having a you know conversation and she said, oh, do you want Botox? And I said, no, I don't really like it. And she said, well, you should really be thinking about having it to prevent... And how old are you? I'm 28. 28. And, and look I, at her, gorgeous, I stunning. like to be able to do this. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really expressive. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with people do, getting Botox and fillers. I think whatever makes you happy, go out and do it. What I have a problem with is a professional industry trying to convince me that I'm not good enough. Mm. Even though I walked into that salon perfectly happy with what I looked like, mm. I was only going to get a facial to treat myself. You know, I walked out of there feeling like 170. Um, and so while you were having your facial, were you lying there thinking, gosh, I thinking, maybe what I do she need... See? Yeah. I thought I was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> What's she been looking at? <laughs> I, was, I was shocked. Just the whole thing makes me furious, absolutely furious, because although I see somebody on the World Wide Web saying, oh, we've got a problem here, let's try and tackle it. At least they're recognising yeah. the problem. Fine. But the reality is, is that someone very, very close to me who's really high profile had their iCloud account hacked and pictures of them only in their underwear, mm. but still, private pictures went online. What they'd sent to their boyfriend, hadn't they? Yes. Yeah. This person had to pay thousands and thousands of pounds to get them taken down. Mm. iCloud don't uh, deny all responsibility. It's your fault for taking the pictures and for not having a three-step or two-step verification on the account, which they don't tell you about when you sign up for, by the way. Um, and nobody can prosecute these people because they're in, under the jurisdiction of other countries. So it's a very complicated and really heartbreaking thing to happen. Mm. And I know that this person... And there's person, nothing you can do there's about There's nothing. It. You feel completely let down by the people that you pay a lot of money towards to be yeah. a part of their corporation. Mm. And the fault of... Imagine pictures of you that you'd, you'd only sent to your partner that were intimate were on porn sites mm -hmm. and the type of people that are looking at them and the type of people comments that are underneath about what they're but, saying. But, I mean, isn't Facebook saying that they could interrupt that and they no, could stop that happening Facebook before it happens? what Facebook is saying is that we're still going to deny your responsibility. We're not going to look at the fact that we need a worldwide web jurisdiction for everybody yes. and we need to start policing the internet properly. They do, yeah. And, actually, so yeah. what if they save the algorithm? I think Tell me that a hacker's not going to be able to turn around and change the algorithm and keep mm -hmm. pushing that photo out. Well, not only that. It's already got Stacey going. Yes. Because a mum, she sparked a debate on Mum's Net with this question. Would you invite the class bully to your child's birthday party? Oh. <coughs> well, oh, not, oh, think about that one. The thing is now, a lot of people, particularly in, in, when the kids have just started school, they invite the whole class, don't they? Until the kids have made their kind of friendship yeah. groups. That the bothers me thing. more than the bully. <laughs> she was off. What? She was off. Why are you inviting the whole class? I felt under so much pressure when my children started school to invite the whole class to Zach's birthday party. One, it's so expensive for people to cater for. Two, your kid literally plays with a handful of friends and knows them and loves them and wants to be around them. He does. My my child did not want to be around the whole entire class. So why do it to him? Why so did you get no, stuck for that? Want to yes. be, if he didn't want to be, if he said to you, "No, I only want to invite these people," that's fine. But if he'd have come home and said, "No, I, I want to invite all the Class, I would have said really... no. There's no way. You tell me something really like close personal about every single person in your class He's that not you know. Tell you that exactly. Five, is he? Uh, no, but they do. They have close what? relationships at that age. So, do you think they're a step too far? No. I mean, it, listen. I wouldn't go as far as to you know, go personal or make any nasty remarks. But I really am passionate about the lack of discipline that I've noticed in, in especially my children and my little brother's schooling. For, for example, they... I remember being scared to get in trouble. I still broke the rules, but not as much as I would have if it was like, mm. oh, yeah, you can all sit indoors and do detention <laughs> through lunch. Like, my, I literally got a phone call uh, the other day saying that Zach had been naughty at school, and... It was him and all his friends sitting in the playground. They were throwing twigs into somebody's garden and trying to wind up their dog. What was the punishment? 
They had to sit in, in, in at lunchtime, all four of them, have a laugh, all the boys together. There, there was no consequence for their actions. So I dragged him out of school and I took him round to the house and I said, go and see the person whose dog that is, then go and meet the dog and see what an inconvenience and how upset they are with what you were doing. Good for you. Because otherwise... Yeah. Good for you. Where is it? But isn't he worried that he'll be laughed at by his friends at school because he he's got will. a very, very strict mum. Well, good. So then he'll think, oh, I won't do that again because it's embarrassing and it's humiliating yeah. and I don't want to behave like that. See, it's funny, but then I actually feel really upset that there are these things on the market because I think these companies are, are literally preying on people to be completely insecure about themselves, so insecure that they yeah. will buy something that definitely is not going to change the shape of your nose <laughs> or make you look ten years younger. Or get rid of your double chin. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> they want us to feel so yeah. low about ourselves that we go out and spend money on this rubbish. And the truth is, if you want to change your nose, personally, I think buy a CBT book or a book that teaches you how to train your brain to feel differently about your appearance and how great you are. Was really expect did you really expect your nose to be straight? Did I really expect you to look younger? Did you or did you expect your double yes, chin? Yes, pay for something. And we walk into it time and time again. No, we if I want pay for something, I want my money's worth. If you're going, this is going to change my nose, it would better blooming change my nose. So we've got to stop buying that stuff. We have got to stop buying it, but also the advertisers have a moral obligation to stop selling us useless rubbish and start selling us the idea that we're actually amazing people. <laughs> Today. <laughs> I'm so outraged today yeah, about but you everything. know there's no profit margin in that and that's the way it is.